When you download the file containing the average incomes by quintile, it should look like this one. And you'll have two tables, one with the numbers in current dollars. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the table in 2011 dollars. And as explained in the assignment, the current dollars indicate the actual amounts people were paid and then reported to in the survey. Whereas the 2011 dollars are those same incomes adjusted for inflation. So we can see that, for example, in 2011, the average income for people in the top fifth or quintile was 178,000 in current dollars. And it should be the same in the um, 2011 listed under 2011 dollars because there would no, be no adjustment necessary. On the other hand, if you look at for 1967, the average for the top quintile was 17,820 in current dollars. That is what was actually the average what people's paycheck was. But when that figure is adjusted for inflation, it's now $104,919. Remember, we want to use the, the 2011 dollars, those adjusted for inflation, because the idea here is we're not that interested in what people actually received on their paycheck. We're more interested about, in terms of what they could buy with that paycheck. So whenever you compare money figures over time, you need to do, uh, do it with adjusted figures. That is um, what they would call real income, which is incomes adjusted for inflation. So what we want to do in this first case is look at a line chart that shows the change over time in average income across these quintiles. We want to see how are the rich doing, poor in the middle. We're going to use these real 2011 dollars. Um, we don't want to use these years because they're all muddled with all these footnotes here in, in parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the numbers for the 2011 dollars. I'm, I'm excluding this last column. That's the top 5%. We're not going to look at that. Obviously, that's going to be very high. But we're just going to look at these figures. I'm going to co copy these. Can press Control C or do it like that, and then I'm going to create a new worksheet and Control V, or else right-click and paste these in like that. And actually, I want to paste them starting on the second row down here so I can leave room for variable names at the top and I can do that by highlighting the first row right clicking insert to insert a new row and I'm going to write in variable names for each of these the first column of numbers is the bottom fifth that's what I'll name it Next is the second fifth, the third fifth, fourth fifth, and the top fifth. And so these are our, our variables are in the header row, and these are the incomes for each year. Now we don't, this actually started with 2011. So in this next column over, I'm going to write that here. This is our year column. I'm write the years back in. Notice that it's it's writing years in a funny format. I can highlight that column and change it from number to general. So it'll just write the number without a comma. I can start writing the, the, the years in like this. Might have to change the format again. I don't have to go all the way down. Remember, Excel can sometimes guess what you want to do, save you time. So if I highlight these numbers here and then I line up the cursor on the very bottom right hand corner, double click, Excel will continue that pattern of reducing the year by one each line. I want to highlight that column and change it to general to get rid of the commas. And now what I want to do is I'm, I'm looking to get a chart 
that goes from 1967 to 2011 rather than reverse. So I want to sort these data. I don't actually have to create a data table. Instead, what I'm going to do is simply I like just one cell amidst all these numbers. Go to data sort. And I'm going to sort by year from smallest to largest. Press OK. Now they reverse themselves. Now it goes from 1967 to 2011. Now since we're not going to do any additional calculations, we don't actually have to create a data table or a pivot table. Instead, I can just highlight the numbers that I want in the table. And I want to include the variable names. So I highlight start with the variable names, scroll all the way down. And actually to make this faster, you can press shift control down arrow to get to the very bottom like that. Once you've highlighted the numbers as well as the variable names, I can go insert line, go with the very simplest line, and now I have the beginnings of a chart. Note, however, that of course the years are not included, but we're going to change that and that's easy to do. Once I have this chart, go up here to the chart tools and press select data. And note that the horizontal axis labels are just this, these numbers that it put in by default. We want to take that out by clicking Edit. And now it's going to ask us for a range. And it has this little red arrow that I press on, which indicates we're going to select what our horizontal or x-axis is going to be, which is going to be year. So I can highlight just that year column. Once I start highlighting it, I can press shift control down arrow to get to the bottom of it like that. Once I'm done with that, I press that little red arrow and Excel will accept that and it shows like this. Press OK. OK. And you'll note actually that I made a mistake by including year in there. And you notice year ends up showing on the chart as the first one here, which doesn't make sense. So in order to take that out, I'm going to press Edit again, delete what I have here, just backspace, press the red arrow again. This time I'm going to start with the very first year and go down, press Shift Control, down arrow, and you can see the addresses here. It's going, um, this is a sheet 7, it happens to be sheet 7, it could be a different sheet with yours, it doesn't matter, and it's going from F2 to F46 press that red button again. Press OK. Now, when I press OK again, I should see a chart with the years in the horizontal axis and then these colored lines representing the bottom fifth, second, third, fourth, and the top. This chart is a bit small. We want to put a title on it. Remember, you can always Grab a hold of the chart, right click, and move it to its own sheet. Do that here. It's bigger and we can see it now. Now to put a title on this and pretty it up a little bit, um, I can select one of these templates under the Chart Tools menu. Note that this template has a title as well as a, a title for the y-axis, as well as for the chart as a whole, and a, a key which it already has. So if I select this template, it automatically inserts this default title, which I can then click on and change. And I'm going to call this Average Incomes by Quintile in the US. And I should actually call this Average Household Incomes by Quintile in the US. It's not individuals, it's households. 1967 2011 it's also important to put the source in this case the data were originally from current population survey and so after you press return there it adjusts give a little more room for the title you can also see this access title you want to change that from the default to what this y-axis represents which is average household income. And now there we have it. 
and we can see that the top fifth incomes on average have skyrocketed especially in the 1980s 1990s in recent years they actually leveled off a bit especially during this recent recession period now we look at the the next one down is the average of the fourth fifth fourth fifth or the second to the top quintile has increased um, but the rate doesn't seem to be as rapid but there has been an increase there on the other hand when we look at these at the bottom there isn't much of an increase at all so what does this tell us about inequality and how it's changed over time well clearly shows that the gap between the bottom fifth and the top has widened over time the top has enjoyed gains especially 1980s and 1990s less so in the 2000s but those gains were not enjoyed by these other groups that started out lower to begin with now this isn't the only way to look at inequality over time of course there are other ways and we're going to look at one more of them as I stated in the assignment sheet one way to look at inequality is to look at the ratio of the average household income at the top div uh, divided by that average household income at the bottom we can do that pretty simply now that we have these numbers if we come back to the sheet here what I do I want to do is I'm going to create a new variable right here and um, to do that I'm going to create a data table just to make the creation of variables easier remember to create a data table you highlight any single cell in the data press control T and then OK and then to create a new variable I start by entering its name this is going to be the ratio of top to the bottom and so it creates that new variable expand it like this I enter the formula for that new variable starting with the equals sign as with all formulas and highlight averaging of the top fifth then divide by bottom press enter now Excel filled it in for the rest this is the average or rather the ratio of the average household income at the top to the bottom and now once we have that we can quickly create a chart of it to do that I'm, I want a chart that shows first of all I'm going to explain what the kind of chart we're looking at it's a chart with year in the horizontal or x-axis and this ratio in the y so you can see how it changes over time to do that I'm going to highlight these two columns like this don't have to create a privet table because we're not doing any more calculations once I've highlighted those numbers that I want in the chart press insert line pick the simplest one and note what it gives you at first is not what we want so we have to go into the select data button again and change that horizontal axis to year and I can select those years again starting with the very first year press OK and if it's still looking like it does here again we can edit this um, we want in the let me go back to that so you can see it the legend entries is what goes on the y-axis and so we're going to edit that as well and it looks like it wasn't doing a good, good job of, of guessing what we wanted so we just remove it um, and we can edit this so what we're looking for is the series name is going to be ratio of top to bottom the values are going to be these ratios and it looks like it's now finally starting to fall together press ok now we should get a chart like this which again you can right click 
move to a new sheet get rid of the legend and here we have the ratio of the top fifth to the bottom fifth from 1967 to 2011 and I can fill in this title to make it more descriptive Again, the source, which is the current population survey. So that was the survey that was originally used for these data. Chart readjusts like that. We do, um, or we can put a, a y-axis title here as well by changing the template. I change this template to layout one under the chart tools. It's going to give me that legend again, which I can delete the access title I can go in there and change so I was a little touchy with this this is the ratio of bottom and um, you might be able to come up with a better title but at any rate this is basically what you want and it's showing you that inequality is increasing because the ratio of average income at the top quintile relative to the bottom has been increasing. It started out where that rich group was making about 11 times, 10 or 11 times more than the poor group. Now they're making 16 times the poor group.